Um, ladies and gentlemen, you are now hanging with the haters. I'm uh, on this, uh, by the way, very beautiful day. It's partly cloudy, K, and that means we're not sitting on top of a high pressure area. I, d- uh, Dick or was, a low pressure. Or a low pressure. Dick was actually giving the weather report uh, and the traffic, I believe, before while I was standing outside the door with Kay, and I missed a lot of that stuff. But, oh, it's beautiful weather. And, Kay, by the way, uh, one question I can tell that all listeners have right now, and if you would just clear this up for me. Okay. Do you think today it's uh, too wet for you to mow the lawn? Places of it probably oh, are. Okay, so we have to be very selective, Kay. Yes. All right. We'll be yes, I, I can mow the high spots. Yeah, well, I'm... I'm uh, uh, charging up the battery for the weed eater, thinking I can uh, weed eat some because well, that's and that's the way it works at our house. You know that mower is self propelled, and I don't mind walking behind it. But man, that weed eater will wear me out. You know, uh, Kay, and I know listeners are concerned about this too. Uh, I think our lawnmower pulls too fast, but I, I just hate to not, slow it down. Not me. I love it. Oh, okay, she's a, a fast it's walker. It's good. By the way, we are not alone here. If you uh, listen to the uh, uh, to Cindy Cochran, I have every confidence that uh, Carly Crimmins, CC uh, Darling is what I call her, but she's uh, uh, Carly Cool. Cool. What is it? CC Cool. CC Cool. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. But uh, anyway, uh-huh. Carly's here. She. Uh, was uh, uh, I guess we would call her an intern uh, a while back, yeah. <laughs> but uh, now she's well. Carly, what is your situation now? Uh, now I am. I'm. I'm still in exit. Um, this coming up year is my last year. Um, and yeah, I'm. I've been doing a lot of things. I, I work at my school coffee shop. I work in embroidery. Wow. I work and I work um, at two jobs off campus. This is what I was doing. Um, Sounds like you're pretty lazy, Carly. Uh, I for, no. <laughs> for those of you who aren't uh, familiar, uh, Carly is without sight. She sends sight. She's uh, uh, blind. And the mm-hmm. I was seeing a video of you, Carly, uh, being a barista. Barista. Uh-huh. Barista. Uh-huh. And uh, just fascinating. One thing that fascinated me uh, a whole bunch was how you put a <laughs> cup down, you turned your back and you started doing some stuff. And when you turned around, you went exactly to where the cup was. And uh, I would yes. have uh, bumped into something or definitely uh, uh, stubbed my toes. And we're talking, toes. Yes, you know, my, with, with good vision, we would my, do that. My, my trick is to just I mean, I, I just have to make sure that my cup, I, I put my cup where I can find it. And then I, um, what, when I, I steam, because I, I steamed the milk and then I came back and put the pitcher down while I um, grinded the coffee. And then I came back and got the cup. Well, I, I have pretty good sight. Uh, I'm hoping to have cataract surgery at some point, probably 10 years down the line. Mm-hmm. But uh, I couldn't be a barista with sight. By the way, we have other uh, people here. Uh, Kiara is here, and she's uh, assisted uh, to Carly. And uh, just as pleasant as she can be. And somewhere in the background is Kalina, who is uh, Dick's intern, at least for the week. And I uh, haven't had much of a chance to talk to her. By the way, Kay, I don't know if you're aware... You are aware, because I told you, uh, so you wouldn't be unawares, uh, that today we our topic was dads, stories about dads, yes. Father's Day's coming yes, up, not this coming Sunday, the following one. Yes. And I put it on Facebook, and I got a plethora of no comments. Uh, and so I'm... Well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, not, it's another week away. Oh, it huh? is. People Who's thinking ready. of their fathers when it's not on Father's yeah. Day? Yeah. So uh, just between now and next week, if you will, uh, give me a, a comment or, you know, if you have a mini story about your dad or if you had a horrible experience with your dad, share that too. Whatever helps you, ladies and gentlemen. I, if you're uh, what I would call human, if you had a uh, actually an air-breathing biped or other as a dad... He had good characteristics, and he had some bad. And uh, there is really no good training for being a dad other than hands-on. And it's the same with moms. But we will talk about that. Uh, I'll have a story uh, about my dad uh, near the end of the show, but uh, we'll 
forego any talk of dads until next week when by the way Dennis O'Connor is going to be on and I will uh, introduce him more on Facebook as if he needs introducing I mean the guy is uh, he's well known he's well known and if you uh, ask him or if you try to think what what is Dennis O'Connor what does he do uh, Dennis O'Connor is a composite of everything he's done, and that is so much stuff, it's scary. 25,000-mile hitchhiking across the country, back, forth, up, and down. Uh, kick him in the butt. Anyway, and so many different things and he did. And he's lived, and he's going to tell us about it, and he's alive to do it. He's going to be alive yeah. to do that. That's, yeah, uh, Dennis, uh, by the way, if you are listening, uh, try to uh, be alive while you're coming. By the way, case something else happened, if you'll recall, we got Brad Meyer... Uh, to take our photos and all. You know, Brad Meyer, I, I'm sure he calls his, his, his uh, what he does, a company. Brad Meyer's photography or something, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, he did some great shots of us, and we got them ready. And, Dick, I'll send those sums of gun to you. They will be on the Iron Lone Star website. You and, got it. you know, other places. And yeah, so. and we'll put it in our... You'll uh, be sick of looking at Oh, us. you're going to be. So they already are. They're writing in, oh, please, no more. Uh but uh, along with, with that, we'll have our uh, a page for sponsorship and all, and uh, that you'll see that, how great a couple we look. And some of you might be interested in sponsoring. And, uh, Kay, you're our contact on that. I don't know what you're going to yes, call anybody that's, right that's, now. that's right. And if Dick's always here. If interested in that, uh, I'll be happy you, to help By you. all means, uh, contact the station also. But we've got that. Anyway, that is stuff coming. Uh, if you're not completely sick of seeing pictures of the uh, Mark and Kay, you are getting ready to be. Of course, uh, Carly is so lucky, Kay, she can't see me. Uh, but uh, uh, Carly, you're missing a lot by not seeing Kay. Okay, in the week. First, here's what I'd like to do on the show today, Kay, with, once again, your blessing. Let's talk about stuff that happened uh, this week. That was the week that was... And then we've got the newspapers, ladies and gentlemen, and I have heard so many people throughout the month or so saying uh, they don't read the paper. I don't read the paper. I don't watch the news. Don't take the paper. Don't take the paper. I'm upset with the news and all. And, uh, you know, that is so I can understand it like everything. But, uh, you know, what kind of a voter does that make a person? I guess a non-voter, I hope. They should just listen to world news like I do. Yeah, that would uh, that would be something. I listen to BBC. In fact, we have some world news I'm going to share with you uh, in a little bit. And by the way, BBC is good because they, yeah. they are, <clears throat> I would say, the most... Uh, <clears throat> they excuse audio me. describe, they, they yeah. make everything seem happier than it really is. Well, they, they usually give it with very little emotion, and they are unbiased it's, with respect it's, to the United yeah, States. It's, rep- it's reporting. Anyway, Not speaking of no. reporting, <laughs> rhymes with recording. And, Kay, yesterday I had to do something that was uh, very difficult for me. There was uh, a... I guess it was a, a mini movie, a movie that I was in a playing. Short a short feature. A short feature. I played an old uh, fat guy who uh, was a, a father, and he was so oh, man, just all messed up. He felt bad about. Uh, he being was an old, old curmudgeon. Sort he of? was a curmudgeon, and Kay, he did not speak without uh, cursing. Sometimes he was. Uh, he did that too, and I hated that. But what I had to do is go back. Here it is. That was filmed last. <laughs> fall or uh before that anyway now the they have what you call uh, audio dubbing recording and that means for some reason while we were shooting there was noise in the background so they had to have me repeat stuff and i had to match my lips on the screen there i am say this mark and match in other words say it just like you did before or it's not going to, you know, you're yeah, going to look the, like you are playing yeah. in Rodan, the Japanese movie where the guy's talking in English, but his mouth is going like something you do not understand. Uh, anyway, I did that, and it was phenomenal how well it worked. And one reason it worked so well, ladies and gentlemen, is because of something called a computer. And he's got lines showing, you know, your voice when you raise your voice and all, and he's comparing it to what you just said, and then he's kind of squeezing them together and putting it in there. I was impressed, and I share that because of wow. this technology, Kay. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. And people that know Jeez. how to use it are oh, yeah. you know, amazing. I, I, I haven't figured out Facebook yet. I, so I haven't either, Kay. I what? have difficulty. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, you send out something, or people getting it, and then you see this thing that says... 
uh, you can actually enhance uh, people, uh, the uh, broad, <laughs> let more people see it and all, and I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, they, they have this new thing on, on Facebook uh, for the blind. They uh, Actually, it's new. Uh, they just made it, and it's basically, it explains what you're, like, you go on Facebook and you see a picture. Yes. It, it'll say a picture of, mi- picture may contain, because they don't really know what it it contains. Oh, yeah, they take say, a lot of They'll say may contain um, people in front of uh, something or, you know, whatever the picture may contain mm-hmm. or picture of outside, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's integrated with Facebook. So um, Facebook wants to be accessible to all. So That in uh, it practically is you know it wasn't long ago they were saying wow uh facebook's getting ready to be taken over by and they listed a bunch of stuff i do not uh remember kiara i'm sure has an idea as does carly but it has not been replaced Kay. it is out there and uh, you know something else that is out there is something called the rotor saw this week <laughs> it's rotor oh, saw here we go okay i saw an infomercial last night i was getting ready to turn it but this guy was good and he had a saw that was red that's thank you Kay. that was a red i had my <laughs> shirt on but unfortunately they were button in the in a, the right area but anyway and Kay, it could cut through metal, and then you take that thing off, and it cuts through uh, tile, and then you take that off, and it cuts through wood, and it was great. And I was thinking, one saw that does all of that, and it would cut in a straight line, and I was ready for it. And uh, You then wanted it, didn't you? I wanted it bad, Kay. And then he yeah. did the thing about uh, only forty nine ninety five, which, folks, is so close to $50, it's scary. $50, but four payments of $50. But if I call now, it'll only be three payments of $50. Plus, I'll get all of this box of different uh, uh, different drill bits and all kinds of stuff with it. And I was ready. And then I thought, you know, a wise thing to do would be to go Google this saw and yes. get some reviews. Son of a gun. I mean, first of all, they had the regular reviews from the company, you know, making up names like this, so-and-so from Ohio, you know, Baybrook, Ohio, and all of this. And then I went to another site, and uh, it was honest stuff. And these people, it got one star out of five. And these people were saying uh, no instructions. And one guy said, when I got it, it looked like such a piece of junk. I just send it off. No uh, explanation of how you put the bits on, and the bits don't cut anything. And uh uh, in fact, on the show, the guy only used it to cut a quarter-inch uh, piece of wood. He wouldn't cut any uh, more than that. By the way, Kay, speaking yeah. of that, what? we've got to take a break. Oh. And one of these things that's not going to be on this break, ladies and gentlemen, is the Roto Saw. I think that's what it is. I would say I'll recommend don't buy it right now up front. But you are right now hanging with the haters. Uh, Mark and Kay and Carly Crimmin is here. CC uh, Darlin. Back in a couple. Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorship rates, which include... Free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor. Or call the station at 936-647-5747. Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Hanging with the haters, Mark and Kay here, and we have the lovely Carly Crimmins with us today. She's here for a visit. It, We've been talking about, you were just talking about the roto saw. The, the roto saw and everything, yeah. Kay. And yeah. you know, what is that? Why is what? What is it? Oh, it's a saw. It's, it's an electric, electric saw that looks like a, kind of like a, a handheld 
a, a large thing that a barber would like uh, shave, shave your back neck yeah. with or but whatever. But it's just very... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's all through wood and all. You know, honey, though, I don't... I know you, you the, I don't know if you get it on emails or or it's some station that you're watching on TV but there's quite a bit of stuff you know that that there is K there's the, yeah the, that I've the, fallen that you've, for yeah that, that's what I'm trying yeah, to say that, here K so. buys books and things like that and some jewelry she needs jewelry like everything but does, it's very cheap online and it doesn't buy, you know there's something called PayPal that you don't even worry about how much it costs <laughs> it uh they're just going to write yeah. it right down and yeah. anyway i do but Kay, it's always interesting thing folks you know how it is so difficult when you're down to the last of your salad dressing you got the wishbone bottle or whatever what's the other bottle craft and these other things yeah. uh yeah. not thousand islands uh seven c something mm. anyway and it's at the bottom you have to pound on it Ladies and gentlemen, I bought for only four dollars and eighty-seven cents, which uh, took uh, cost me about nine bucks after the shipping and everything. This thing—it's like a little triangle that you screw on the uh, top where the lid goes on your salad dressing. You tump it upside down, and you just leave it in your fridge cake, and it drips all the way. Can y'all see the gravity here? The not, it, yeah. And the little uh, triangle thing has a little bottom that you clip open, and it's like a squirt part. Okay, I bought it, and it's well, wonderful. Well, you know, as long as we can keep like a $5 limit on this, I think yeah. it'll be okay. By the way, I was tempted by something that I saw this morning, and uh, I never thought there was a need, but come to think of it there, I, I can see where it would be useful, and that was a uh, toilet foot stand. Uh, it it is at an what? angle, footstool kind of thing, and you put your feet on it as you're seat, uh, seated, and your legs won't go to sleep. Isn't oh, that marvelous? That's, that's that is, awesome. It's just it. Anyway, Kay, I'll I'll yeah, look Have you ordered that. it yet? I have not. Okay. I have well, not. Well, let's that's discuss going. this later. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I, I have right here, Kay, our uh, newspaper. Here, I'm looking at the Courier, and I was, uh, I'm going to draw attention to some things and let Kay help me with some uh, instruction. In fact, this first thing she can help me with is uh, involves tomorrow there's several things happening tomorrow one is the donald duck birthday celebration and uh wow yeah that's going to be at the children's museum i have no idea how old donald duck is uh, i think he's I, older than I, we are he's <laughs> older than us Kay. Yeah. gotta <laughs> I be so. i think he, he I was think pre-war so. and uh, the thing is though that uh, confuses me is this they're having a tween t-w-e-e-n quidditch match for muggles uh, and that is going to be at the South Regional Library on Lake uh, Robbins Road. Okay, what is Quidditch? And well, I know Qu what a muggle Quidditch is, but explain Quidditch is this. that Harry Potter game where they, they, they ride on their flying broomsticks. Mm -hmm. That's and what I thought. They, they have bludgers, and they have, it's kind of like goalposts at each end of the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, there's a, f a flying snitch, and whoever catches the snitch wins the game. Uh, muggles are people who have magical abilities but their parents or were, were not they're just sort oh. of like a i don't know okay you're playing uh uh what is it, quidditch with a what's the thing called that you're holding trying to put in a witch or a quitch uh, or a, the golden s snitch? snitch yeah that's but just it just silly. Fly, it just flies around and avoids people Somebody, we could have Dick call that. I'd just soon not call him and find out because the guy at responsible prob probably isn't there and the librarian would tell me, look, uh, quit talking uh, Quidditch and stuff. I have no idea what you're saying. But please, someone, go to that thing. It's uh, 2 o'clock for ages 9 to 12 and uh, at 12.01 Lake Robbins. And if they've got Lake flying Robbins, broomsticks, I want to know about that it. That has got to be interesting. <laughs> that would be Fascinating. That, was, that would be pretty stuff. cool. I want one. Yeah. <laughs> that, I will, that I will order. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was looking in the letters to the editor. Uh, boom, boom. Goodness, this is last Sunday's issue. And listen to this. I read uh, a letter here in the Courier from a veteran, 87-year-old uh, gentleman. He was uh, a veteran, I think, of World War II. I could be wrong. But he, anyway, he's very concerned about one thing, and that was uh, President Obama going to Hiroshima, uh, sometimes pronounced Hiroshima. And here, let me read you his first uh, sentence here, and I have great respect for this gentleman, by the way. He says, smell it coming. 
See, when you read something that says smell it coming, that's pretty bad. And the next uh, uh, comment involves the President of the United States. Smell it coming. Mr. O is about to attempt to disgrace the USA to the whole world. It will be rather subtle if possible. Um, And then you go on to read it, and he's talking about how uh, upset he was and all of the things that the Japanese did. And oh, it, he's saying was that bad. President Obama is going to apologize <clears throat> for uh, the United States dropping the bomb on uh, Hiroshima, and it would be a disgrace to the United States. Uh, by the way, by the time this letter came out, I don't know when he wrote it, but uh, the president had already been to Hiroshima, yeah. and he said before he went, I am not going to apologize for dropping the for President Truman dropping the atomic bomb, I'll tell you up front. And the Japanese prime minister or whatever office you call their president uh, said, I don't expect him to. So here somewhere or other, this gentleman heard from somewhere, from the news, probably not the newspaper, but probably someone on the radio or something that says, the president's going to go over there and apologize for this. And uh, wow, if we hadn't done that, yeah. the... Uh, Japanese, we would have lost a half a million people over there. I I look at this and I, uh, like I say, I have great respect for this man, but uh, the thought that there are people out there who believe that, some pr- people probably already believe he apologized or something, but... Uh, probably so, and some people not. believe the fact that he even went there, Yeah, you it's know, that, that shows... Yeah. You know, it's an apology just his being there. He even so. hugged a, a, a gentleman, an old Japanese uh, man who lost his entire family and was actually there. Uh, during a survivor. Hey, yeah. you even read where uh, some American POWs were there. They were killed. I did. That um, I don't think the United States knows knew it at the time, and I don't know that it would have changed anything anyway, but there was a prisoner of war camp there, yeah. and so Americans were, were killed. Right. Um, from, from you know, the bomb drop. without the atomic bomb, it was there were several things we could have done. One was just boycott the island, and they would have eventually surrendered. Uh, uh, it was believed, starve starved starve to death. Uh, the other said, storm the beaches, in which you know we would have lost uh, in upwards of half Est- a million people. Estimates yeah. were about five hundred thousand Americans yeah. lost. And a lot of people said wait it out. But here is the thing uh, that you seldom hear talked about. We couldn't afford to wait it out because Russia had just, I mean, they came in, they won World War II uh, with respect to Germany taking over Russia. They conquered uh, Germany. They went all the way to Berlin. They made Berlin before we did. They lost 20 million soldiers. They lost 20 million uh, of their population. It was horrible. And whenever, uh, Russia never declared war on Japan, but as soon as they took Berlin, and as soon as they put their flag up and everything, uh, Stalin said, okay, now I'm going to declare war on Japan, and we're going to go down there, and uh, I don't mind storming the beaches. You know, we just lost 20 million soldiers here. We'll storm the daylights out of them. And Truman realized, holy cow, if he goes down there, storms the beaches, as you can see, Russia, the Soviet Union, USSR, uh, is going to claim part of Japan. He would have a foothold in the Pacific, other than just uh, uh, Siberia, Cam, Kamchatka, yeah, and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So Truman had to make the decision. We had three atomic bombs. He dropped uh, two of them and had one more he could have, but um, as it turns out, he did not need to. Uh, horrible, but folks. Uh, another fact people don't know: the firebombing uh, we had invaded. We didn't call it napalm, but we had uh, napalm in essence. We dropped over Tokyo a number of times and killed more than the total sum of both those in Nagasaki and Hiroshima uh, doing that. And Mm -hmm. you don't hear, oh, the terror, but those were cities, and they were, uh, that Tokyo was a city, and there were, you know, non-combatants there. Had I been in a prisoner of war camp, had I been on the Filipino, Burma uh, death march, I would have very similar feelings as uh, this gentleman here does, I feel sure. When you're thinking about a, uh, a country that it, back then, if their soldiers believe you're, you know, less human because you surrendered, they don't care what they do to you. That is a mindset that is very scary. Right. And, would have and the trouble. Japs would not, they would commit suicide. Or the majority of right. them would before they would surrender. Yeah. And back then, I would even do like Kay said, I, I would have called them Japs, but I would not uh, now. Oops. Did I do that? Yeah, that's so quite sorry. okay. By the mm-hmm. way, uh, 
uh, the Japanese should be very happy that uh, we they did surrender to us because it was no time before their economy beat the daylights out of ours because we went over there and said, we're not going to keep your king, keep uh, your emperor, whatever, but uh, and here's some money to rebuild. Son of a gun, we did a, a great job with yeah. them, and I respect yeah. the United States for that. Anyway, Kate, that was one of the plethora of news stories, and they're still out there. Uh, I've got one that didn't make the news. Kate, it, it involved our backyard this morning, and I haven't written about it, so it's not in the news. What happened in the backyard this morning? Our neighbor, it was actually, now that I say it, the side of the house. It was our neighbor's front yard. Kate, uh, we don't have any cats. Our neighbor has enough for the entire world. And there was a cat fight, Kay. It was a, a, a <laughs> yellow cat and a kitten, a little great kitten. Kay's this big. If y'all can see, it's uh, the hands are very small. This yellow cat would jumped on the kitten, and he was pouncing on him, you know, and the little kitten had his legs up going, ooh, ooh, ooh. anyway, whatever they do. And then the yellow cat backed off, and that uh, little <laughs> kitten looked up and jumped on him. It was so beautiful. It was like, you know, they're playing around. I yeah. just couldn't take my eyes off. And I do not like cats, ladies and gentlemen, and I've never tasted one. I don't even think I'd like them that way. <laughs> but this was cute. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of uh, eating, uh, we've got to take a break right now. This is the important break, and maybe there will be a food a sponsor, but that most of all, it'll be Dick News Traffic. Hanging with the haters here with Mark and Kay and Carly Crimmin. Back in a three. Want to check out what it's like to be on the radio? Need credit for school? For an internship? Then contact Dick online at dick at irlonestar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we are here to be part of the community. for hanging in here with the haters. We've been talking about just kind of newspaper stuff. And I thought I lost him for a while, Kate. Well, I know. I know. And I, I, he asked me this morning, what happened with the primaries yesterday? Because we missed the, the, the late night news. But anyway, it looks like uh, Clinton won most of the primaries that were held yesterday. Sanders won in North Dakota and in Montana. And on the Republican side, uh, Trump won all of them, although, uh, and he got all the delegates, I think, except maybe in California. Uh, Cruz got a few and uh, uh, Kasich got a few. Yeah. So, so, anyway. Be, uh, is no, no we're, al- we're, almost, we're almost there, folks. Almost there. Down to the last two. You know, uh, bringing that up, Kay, I'm looking here at the newspaper. Here's a letter to the editor, and uh, I just want to read one part of it. And this person says, it is a shame that we are not able to nominate a presidential candidate that could unite us all. Uh, Trump says, when I'm elected, we're going to be united. We'll have this Congress do it. You know, and he has no answers how, but boy, that would be great. The point is, uh, it is impossible. I've got to say this. It is impossible to unite this country. It never has been possible to unite us. It took a war, a civil war, more people killed in that war than the sum total of all other wars uh, over uh, states' rights. If states should have the right or not, we're not going to do what the uh, government says. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a, a result of this, no person is going to come in. If you take a stance on anything, half of the population isn't going to like it. You know, the, the big uh, arguments now against Democrats and, uh, or anyone, uh, you can look at what they stand for and all, and uh, when people look at it, oh, that sounds good, that sounds good, that sounds good, oh, my gosh, pro-choice. They want, uh, they believe people should kill babies and all. I can't believe it. I'm not voting for them. But, oh. folks, that's an issue that uh, involves uh, so much stuff. Uh, and if it involved murder, I would definitely be uh, uh, against pro-choice. But that's one of those things that people have. The, the true difference between the two parties are this. Get out your notepad. Hey. It's a uh, good grief. I'm going to wave turn. at the guy in the window. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, we have a, a guest here, Brad. I'm going to finish this story in just a second. Bradley, uh, get over here. The only reason I'm doing this is this we guy. We have a drop in. Yeah. Uh, Brad, <laughs> take that uh, mic over there. Kay, pull that out. And, Brad, I was just in the middle of telling people that the big difference between Republicans and Democrats deals with money. Money. 
what the government should do. Conservatives say, government, stay out. You're causing too much trouble until their house floods and everything. And why isn't the government doing something about this? Or why aren't you stopping this from happening? Why aren't you regulating these people that are taking everything? I saw a bumper sticker, uh, K last week that said, um, that all the government's ever done for me is take my money. All the government, the guy is driving on an interstate freeway, highway that was built by both federal and state money, mostly federal, and an and automobile. And probably paying a toll. Yeah, to uh, some oh, company. Yeah, don't get me started on toll roads. Oh, by the way, wow. Anyway. As opposed to Democrats that want to just give away the national wealth to anybody who drops a shoe and can't get up yeah. to get it. You know, if you looked at the amount of money spent on uh, uh, giving money away in the United States, it is slim. Uh, Social Security would pay for itself if we didn't keep borrowing money from it. If you look at uh, uh, giving foreign aid to people, uh, the amount is less than 1% of our budget that we give. Uh, We do not, and yet I was reading this article today in this uh, lady, uh, this conservative lady, and she says, the great $16 billion tax credit black hole where some companies don't pay any taxes because uh, they can declare whatever they want. You know, wow, this cost me, this cost me, and I end up paying nothing. That doesn't bother her. But what bothers her in here with this $16 billion black hole is there's some people, uh, some uh, uh, people, some of them aren't even citizens of the United States who are taking a very small portion of this, some of them, most of them legal, but a lot of them illegally, and that chaps the daylights out of her. Me too. Corporations, and it does. Are, Are you upset at all, Bradley, about the corporations? There are so many things to be upset about, Mark. I think yeah. you're just transgenderism, the, the, Brad. The, the, that's much ado about nothing. Isn't Nobody it? cares. We're, oh, we're they so, care. Society they is care. so willing to be upset over the tiniest little things. Yeah. And speaking of tiny little things, Which, I was just dropping by to say hi. Oh, thank so, you, Brad. You know, <laughs> I was. I, you know, you've got three very lovely ladies that you we, should be talking to, not me. Just, Brad, I just wanted to <laughs> see you and again say yeah. thank you for taking our picture and doing everything. He's an ex. If he can make me look good, and then damn, he is a good. master. Oh, hey, you look good. K, K looks great. His uh, biggest problem was me, and uh, finally he just said, uh, "That's okay." The biggest uh, problem in my life is you, Mark. That's true. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Brad, it's so good always to see good you. to see you. By the way, I was with Brad. Uh, ooh, two, three years ago, we were actually going around uh, uh, doing the restaurant, restaurant reviews. All, restaurant reviews. Yeah. I was always jealous because yeah. you got to go out to eat all those places, you know, and I didn't. I, I really didn't enjoy it. Brad was uh, very good at saying what he believed was true, whether it hurt or not, and I could not do it. I could say, yeah, I don't like these enchiladas and all, but look at this owner. He's so nice and all. I had to bring out the good stuff because I... I didn't want to. Well, really. you know what? That that's so y'all kind of. Yeah, maybe. Complimented one another, perhaps. Anyway, perhaps that was just a, a wonderment. And by the way, I, I, I. One of my reasons was I didn't want to bring these restaurants down. But come to find out, nobody was uh, watching our videos anyway. So it wouldn't have hurt anybody. I don't believe. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I speaking of robots, K. I've got to share this because I spent last night finishing a whole. Uh, deal on robots and the things that are coming in. You know, how many of y'all, let's see a show of hands out there in Radio Land. Raise your hands if you saw Aliens with uh, Sigourney Weaver. Uh, a lot of you did. Okay, 18. Now, how many of you remember that big jello, uh, jello, yellow, see I get it mixed up, jello and yellow, crane thing that she got in and it walked around and it was fighting the alien and all she was doing is moving her arms. They've got those, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, they showed this army guy. Do you mean alien or aliens? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, aliens with an S. <laughs> they don't, yeah, they don't. They don't help you out today, like today's they, movies, number three or number eight. It's oh. just alien, and then oh, the sequel's aliens. Right. That in the, the sequel. Well, the first one was great, but the second one, when she comes out in that. Uh, giant tractor thing or whatever it was that impressed the daylights out of me. I like the second. That's one. not the only movie where like, they've had stuff like that. Oh, it's not. No. Not, well, you, can you imagine, Mark, the writing process? It's like we want to watch her fight one of the wolves. You know, she's probably like a dog to the queen yeah. alien size wise. We'll put her in a machine. Put her in a machine. <laughs> and son of a gun, the thought of the machine. They barely introduced it at the beginning. 
uh, to show you, wow, that's interesting, and son of a gun when she comes out in that thing. But here's the deal. Uh, on this show, they actually showed soldiers, one particular soldier. They gave him weights, 100 pounds on a backpack, and uh, all of a sudden he was in an exoskeleton. All it means is he looked like he had braces on his legs and his arms and his shoulders and his neck, and he was running through the woods with a hundred pounds strapped to his back. Hmm. And he said, really, the only uh, thing that's wearing me out here is the movement of my arms and legs, but there is no pressure, no weight on me because of this exoskeleton. Hmm. Well, then they started building on that, and they showed a robot, Kay, that can read a your expressions. without a man, huh? Yeah that can read your expressions and can tell if you're happy or sad. That's incredible. That is incredible. And they say they're coming to where it can tell if you're lying or not. I, I've only well, seen that in okay, movies. Okay, that's not... That's not, that I, wouldn't. That's not good. But uh, <laughs> anyway, and it's a lot of it is, you know, due to whatever waves are hitting you and everything. Yeah. And uh, what it... Uh, can do they say of course can be used to tell the you know tell if somebody's telling the truth or something or whatever or it could be used with just about anything or it could be used like uh, carly uh, doing the barista things it could do this but it could actually see the cups and everything it was doing and here's the thing that makes me think this is coming well, sooner I don't want than it to later. do my job for me. No. No I way. Keep them right. out of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one thing that was uh, making it possible for this to happen is k they no longer have to program the entire thing they're doing which means type out data and all what they can do is take a robot and hook it to a man i mean the wires and all mm -hmm. and have him move his finger and that robot sees what's happening and, and, that, it, and it interprets pro that it. program move it. your head move this move that here i'm angry here i'm happy huh. you know and just in other words, kind of wear it during the day, and then they say, oh, my gosh, I've seen, and you don't have to tap, type all that out. They're saying in uh, 2040 we will have the the walking around now, robots well, like the they, series they human. say in 2020 there's going to be Google cars. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and they said 20 yeah. years from 1988. Uh, I actually said to my classes, I said, you will see no telephone wires 20 years from now, no electric wires. It'll all be underground, or we will have hydrogen cells and all, and there will be flying. Uh, there's no flying cars. Mm. Well, I, was no. Wrong. I just no. want to be able to drive again. That's all. Well, no, oh. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't, don't mind you don't sitting care. in the front seat. I don't uh. care about like the, all these other robot things unless they're going to bring my vision back or right. take try teach me i mean let me drive especially here because there's no yeah. form yeah. of transportation there's uber but it's so expensive like it's 18 to 24 dollars to come here wow from here wow. from my house to downtown Conroe. i looked it up okay where are you coming from from um i'm coming from my house i live in in conroe of course and I'm coming. I, I live in Teeswood. Okay. Oh, okay. oh gosh, that is okay. expensive. So, yeah, that's yeah, not that that's far. That's why I'm like, it's not that far. No, it's sure not. It, why is it so expensive? It's not yeah. that far. By the way, the the thing that makes things possible, and the reason you can't say 40 years, 20 years, is because of something they're calling alpha barriers. Scientists say that. Occasionally, something will happen. Someone will notice. Uh, you've probably heard of buckyballs. Mm -hmm. What they are are just uh, 60 carbon atoms you can somehow or other put together under a microscope or do some reaction where it is that are stronger than anything that they predicted buckyballs are going to have houses built with these and, uh, you know, you won't have, need any uh, armored resistant, uh, bullet resistant armor or anything. But that hasn't happened. But the thing is, someone out there is going to invent something, just like the uh, transmitter uh, or whatever, the space program that made everything smaller. Anyway, and oh. when that happens, oh, yeah. technology is going to shoot up Microchips. big time. Microchips. Let's, yeah. yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, something that has got to shoot up now, we've got our final break. And when we come back, Kay, there's going to be a joke, and there's going to be a story. I cannot okay. wait. You're hanging with the haters on www.lonestar.com. Mark and Kay.
Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorships rates, which include free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor or call the station at 936-647-5747. Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. haters it's a joke and story time and since i can't tell a joke worth a flip and I'm oh yeah i can storyteller we always let mark do that okay unfortunately we can't have the joke because i just received this urgent message that has just come on and the fact that i've got to read this means that we no time have to for skip a the joke. joke the story okay. will have all right here's the message uh it sounds like a okay let me just read it to you it says at walmart today it will be, uh, ooh, it, oh, at Walmart today, it'll be partly crowdy, and there will be a 70% chance of you seeing someone you know. Uh, did you, who wrote that? That's just silly. Partly but crowdy. But it's true. Oh, what? it is true. There's somebody you, you're yeah, going to know in I there. I always see somebody I know. It's you know, like a 100% chance yeah. for me. You know, we don't go to Walmart that much. I always like to put that in as a qualifier. Uh, but one thing they did that was good is they... Um, I guess that means they're going to fire more people, but they have the self-checkout now. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the way they make that very valuable is they don't hire many checkers to where you're either going to wait in a very long line or you're going in. Well, the line at the self-checkout there can get long, too. Oh, it can. As it turns out. Yeah. You just got to time it. You know, you got to know when to go to Walmart. The self-checkouts, you have to make sure you don't scan the item twice or three times. Yeah, that would be terrible. I don't know. I think it would be easier to go up to well, the police cashier. officer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carly, a police uh, officer uh, just wrote by. I wanted to. A uh, cashier. Yeah. Okay, a story, ladies oh. and gentlemen. It is um, next week is going to be Father's Day. It's not Father's Day, but not this Sunday, but the following Sunday is. But next Wednesday, when we get Dennis O'Connor here, we are going to talk about fathers, among other things. Uh, and Father's Day. But right now, what I wanted to do to kind of prep us for that is tell a little story about um, my dad. I uh, My dad uh, worked, I uh, did a lot of things. He worked in the oil fields for many years, and uh, he did carpentry work for other years, and he worked in a refinery until, he, uh, until a year before he died. He retired at the age of 62 and died a year later. Uh, and his joy in life was to get to retire. But um, anyway... My dad was a, a good disciplinarian. He scared the daylights out of us, Kay. And uh, the, the thing is about my life, and I don't know about, well, it wouldn't be yours because I know your, your father. Uh, I knew your father. Uh, I was so much closer to my mom, it's scary. I got most of my spankings from my mom. Mm-hmm. She's the one that was around us all the time. And the thing is, somebody's honking at me. The thing <laughs> is... Right now, Kay, of late, I've been dreaming about my dad. I mean, for years. And my mom, I don't dream about, and I really think about my dad more, and I don't understand it. And uh, one of the stories, I guess I'm getting older, and I'm realizing, you know, we had seven kids, and dad had to take care of us working in a refinery that he hated to do. But uh, when dad uh, died, we were not there. Everyone was, not everyone, everyone but Jill was at a party at our house in Conroe. And uh, I knew dad was in the hospital, but I asked, uh, is it okay if we go? I asked mom, she said, yeah, I'll go. He's, all he can do is stay in the hospital. They'll take care of him and all. And so we went to our house. We had barbecue and all, and son of a gun, I got a call. Okay, it's one of those calls that you realize when it rings, that's not good. And... I, I don't. I, it's kind of like God touches you and tells you your, your mm. spider senses are. Anyway, I picked it up and uh, it was uh, my sister's husband saying uh, uh, your dad passed away. No, he's sick, but he's doesn't look doesn't look good. So we rushed down there, and uh, when I came down in the hall, uh, Mike met us. That's my sister's uh, 
husband and said he did not make it. And it was just a big shock. And I did not cry. I felt bad. I felt bad for mom. I did not cry going to the funeral home and helping mom pick out the casket and uh, doing all kinds of things. By the way, the funeral home was in Baytown. They were the nicest people I have ever met for a funeral home. They said, uh, you know, I said, look, we don't have the money now to pay you, but we're going to, you know, get, he said, I don't even want you to think about that. He said, I know you've got uh, to clear, uh, you know, uh, your will and all of these things. We know we'll be paid. And golly, what a nice guy. I haven't heard of anyone that nice since. Anyway, and I did all of that, and I couldn't, you know, I wasn't crying. We went to church, and they sing all those songs. I didn't cry, but then we had the showing of the casket. And still I was greeting people, you know, and telling jokes about my dad and all, Mm -hmm. and he was there, and they were all very sympathetic. And then Kenneth Nichols came in, and I have since seen him, and I, I even mentioned this to him a couple of years ago. Kenneth Nichols is a friend, a real tough friend. Uh, I mean, he's worked on a lot of things. And he was just, you know, all male, son of a gun, nice guy, but big. And he came in to the uh, viewing, and, you know, like everybody else, I reached my hand out to shake his hand. And, Kay, he knocked my hand away, and then he reached over and hugged me. And, I mean, tight. And I started bawling like a baby. I could not control myself. It was like this man, he did not say a word. He did not say, I'm sorry, or it's horrible, or anything. He just could look at me and hug me. And at that time, I think I cried enough for the entire uh, time. I I mentioned that. I don't know what uh, uh, the reason. I mean, my main reason is I do have one, and that is this. You know, when people are in bad shape, uh, they've lost a loved one, or whatever has happened in life, the worry is, I don't know what to say. I can't, you know, the the tendency is to sympathize. Oh, that must be terrible. You know, he's in a better place or whatever, and all of these things. But, you know, Kay, most of the time it's best to just not say anything and hug, maybe say I love you. Right. I think just being there. Ladies and gentlemen. You are loved out there, and we are hanging with the haters, Mark and Kay. I'd like to thank uh, Carly Crimmin for being here, and uh, Kalina, the uh, uh, intern. Intern, thank you very much. Have a good and week, Kiara. Kalina. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Hanging with haters, Mark and Kay, back next week with Dennis O'Connor. Thanks for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star Community Radio, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, TV, Media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schischler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Contact Dick Schischler at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.